this one maybe for uh, Miss Kasria and maybe Stephanie as well. So how often do we need to change pessaries? How long can one stay in? Um, so the pessaries now are um, reusable. So that's the first thing. So they can be taken out, rinsed, and put back in. I mean, they are, they're plastic, aren't they? Or they're silicone, so they last forever. Um, so we initially fit them. Um, then you probably need to um, come back and make sure that it's okay. Maybe four to six weeks later, it's the right size. And then um, it should be changed every six months, probably, or someone should look at it every six months. Excellent. Thank you. Um, another one here. So would you consider PV estrogen for younger women, e.g. early 30s, for recurrent UTIs or recurrent thrush? No other cause found. Ms. Kasria? That's a very interesting and important question, actually. So there are a group of women who are several groups of women who are younger, who are not postmenopausal, and the estrogen does help them. And if you are on the pill, for example, for a very long period of time, it tends to make you slightly hypoestrogenic. And the question that I have started asking lots of younger women is, do you have vaginal dryness? And you'd be surprised at how many women say, oh, yes, I do. And it's those women, and if you're very low body weight as well, um, you know, which has become normalized. We don't even think anymore that, because it's, that's what's normal in vogue. Um, so very low body weight, on the pill for a very long period of time. Um, yes, I do give this cohort vaginal oestrogen um, if needs be. And they, they will say that there is dryness and their UTIs do get better. And breastfeeding women as well sometimes. Yes. That's very important. I'm glad yep. you mentioned that. So um, pretty much all my chronic UTI patients who have a baby and then, you know, part <coughs> of their postpartum plan, their breastfeeding is to give them vaginal oestrogen because otherwise they're on a back foot and it's just yeah. going to all collapse back in again. Um, so that's another Im important group. And it's, it, it is safe. It's a very relatively safe medication. Um, so I would give it. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, Ms. Kasari, you were saying about you don't know why um, tibial nerve stimulation helps improve. So my background is podiatry, but I'm also a pain management specialist in movement, so I thought I might just give you my thoughts on why, yeah. um, because it's actually more biomechanical. So um, when you stimulate the tibial nerve, you actually help the patient supinate. So you're actually creating an arch. This arch actually allows us to be able to posterior tilt our pelvis. And we know with women, they're in a greater angle of anterior tilt, and post-pregnancy women get stuck in a much more greater <coughs> anterior tilt. So what happens is they get a pelvic torsion. So if you're getting a pelvic torsion, you can see how those um, pelvic floor muscles are also being contorted because instead of, it's just natural physics. So instead of being able to contract in the fully, in the, in the best um, alignment possible, they're not. So they become flaccid. So that's one of the reasons why when you're doing that tibial um, nerve stimulation, you're actually allowing the body to posterior tilt. And 80% of our gait cycle is in a posterior tilted position. So it's actually quite huge. And But the problem also is that in order to efficiently posterior tilt, you have to have good supination, but also good pronation. And actually, some of these patients are also wearing um, supportive footwear that's, you know, the antipronatories, the sketches, all of that you hear about. But actually, that what that does, it actually inhibits the strength of these muscles being able to posterior tilt and allow that patient to access. Also, with pregnant ladies and post-pregnancy, they actually have a stuck coccyx, and I deal with a lot of stuck coccyx in my time, and one of the reasons why they struggle to defecate, so you put them on that squatting stool to try and open that coccyx, but actually, because it's jammed, they're still getting that kind of not efficient release, and so this is one of the other things. So when you were saying about the, the um, ankle stimulation, this is why it's because we're actually putting our body through a pelvic tilt and I firmly believe that if your foundations are correct on your feet that actually creates a whole range of better structural positions but a bit like uh, I always say to my patients you're like a building right if your foundations aren't steady the rest of the building is going to start to break down with you and as again we know with anterior tilted positions you've got the obturator canal where you get nerve compression and lymphatic um, drainage issues so again you're in that kind of classic making that swelling area, which makes you even tilt even further in anterior tilt position. Also, gut dysbiosis, 
has a huge impact on anterior tilted position. So when you're putting these patients on antibiotics, prolonging them, they're also getting much more of this prevalent gut, dis gut dysbiosis, so you're making them into more anterior tilted position. So I just wanted to clarify some of it. Sorry. Thank you. Shows a wealth of, um, of skills in this crowd as well, and also I think the physics as well. We can't forget, you know, it's the physics of the human body as well. And do you do you, do you agree with that as well? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I, it, it is fascinating actually, and I, I think you're right. We um, there's a there's a lot of stuff we don't understand about the pelvic floor musculature, certainly. So I also see a lot of athletes, yeah, and they and are. They all over the place. Yeah. They have stress incontinence. They have tight pelvic floor, but they can't relax the pelvic floor either. So they can't, the you know, they can't tighten it. They can't relax it. Yeah. So one of the reasons is they actually have um, the ischial femoral tibia is actually super tight, so they cannot get up to that. So and people that ischial femoral ligament, it has enough of an impact on how people can adjust. Thank you. So I think